Um, this um, presentation is based upon a, a paper that uh, we published. Uh, it's a joint work with Professor Mike, Mark Lass, that is uh, my PhD advisor. Um, as you can see, it, uh, it was um, published, part of it is uh, published uh, on uh, the International Journal of Applied Mathematics, and uh, as well as in uh, KDD workshop um, in the August last year. The motivation for uh, this talk is based on taking one big data and trying to produce one, um, one decision tree that is, ba that is based upon it. Uh, we try to uh, compare our results to Ensemble that is considered one of the most um, uh, popular and uh, most of the accurate way to, um, to use uh, different types of models. And um, when we compare our method, and we will see it in the next slides, uh, to Ensemble, uh, we see that our model has um, two benefits in, a, in comparison to Ensemble. One is the interpretability, and the other is the classification speed. And um, this is the agenda for our session today. OK. So the idea based or stemmed from uh, the, um, the game, Who Wants to be a Millionaire? As you can see from the analysis, um, the audience has much better accuracy than uh, the experts. And we might ask ourselves, how, how does it come? How, how the audience has better accuracy than um, experts? And what we realized is all the audience has something in common. So there is an inner model, basically some something that is based upon neural networks in each a person mind and there is something similar and is common to all the people that decided the same thing so if we will find this common part we might use it for classification and anticipation of uh, the models the problem of producing one um, decision tree from uh, big data is a popular um, task, and there are many approaches in the literature that we can see. One is based upon the MapReduce processing, and uh, um, has some uh, this has some limitation when we take different uh, models and we try to make them one. It is called the produce uh, phase. Uh, the other um, approach is transferring multiple decision trees into one by um, using a uh, rule base. So the overhead is uh, in the transforming phase in, in two directions. One, uh, taking the decision trees and transforming them into the rule base. And the other is the vice versa, taking the rule base and transforming it into a decision tree. Ensemble, we have already talked about the interpretability and uh, practically in Ensemble, there is no specific model. It is only a majority voting that each of the different models vote for. Another approach that we can find is um, the uh, merging, decision tree merging, uh, that uh, adds an overhead uh, to the map and reduce phases to both, uh, to both phases. And another approach that we can find is uh, transforming into Fourier, um, and uh, it is not interpretable. Um, so this is one of the motivations that we try to leave one um, uh, decision tree that will represent the whole data. In this slide, we can see the taxonomy, the taxonomy uh, of um, the different approaches uh, the different approaches for a parallel decision tree construction. Uh, the two uh, different approaches can be by task parallelism and data parallelism. The task parallelism distributes the decision trees uh, nodes among the processors, 
while the data parallelisms takes the data itself and parallelizes it. So there are two different kinds of uh, data parallelism. One is, is uh, vertical and the other is horizontal. Horizontals mean to, sh to shard all the data into different um, shards by uh, rows, while vertical, if you know uh, databases like Vertica or others, that they slice it into a vertical way. And uh, the combination of them is also a possible way for sharding the data. So we try to minimize the computational complexity uh, of the reduced phase by selecting only one decision tree that will represent the whole data set. How do we do it? This is an overview of our process. So the first phase is taking all the data and sharding it into the number of processes that, you, that we have. We start from the left to the right. Um, we produce from each slice, from each shard, a decision tree. And then we transform the decision tree into a BTF bracket tree format that it's practically taking the, the tree and showing it as one line that in, for each different level separates a uh, pattern. So uh, the map phase ends at this phase, and after it, we use the reduce phase. The reduce phase is comparing between the different decision trees or the different BTF formats of each decision trees. After we have the comparison of each uh, two couples of uh, decision trees, we compare between them, and then we select the tree that represents or the, the most similar to all the others. Uh, our uh, methodology is, was called uh, SISM, Syntactic Similarity Method. And now we will go to, into details. No, I'm, I'm not going to explain you the algorithm of the BTF. That it practically transforms the, the um, decision tree into the record tree format recursively. And this is the algorithm that I'll show you step by step. As you have already seen, we shard the data set into different shards, the number of CPC, the processes we have. Then we produce the decision tree. We, we transform them into the BTF. And then we compare the tree added distance between each of them. The RTED, as was presented in the previous um, uh, slide, was um, shown and, uh, uh, by um, Pavlik et al. at uh, 2011. So as you can see, the first one, the first decision tree, has the upper level of A, B, and C, the second one A, B, and E, and the third one A, F, and E. Who is the most similar decision tree? That's right. The second one, Y. It has the most common nodes to the others. You can see that A and E are common to the third one, and A and B are common to the first one. And hence, as you can see from the distance, it is the one that is chosen to represent the whole data. As you all know, different uh, or slight difference in data can cause major changes to the decision tree structures. And our second approach is called semantic similarity algorithm. It works the same as the first one, it starts the same. It produces different, uh, it produces from each shard decision tree. But now we don't look at the decision tree structure, but to the results of the prediction of the decision tree over um, part of the data that we are trying to validate. And we, we, we find the common um, results for each uh, row, and the one that has the most common is the one to be chosen to represent the whole. 
Since at each attitude has its own benefits, we combine them into one um, method. The combined method practically works the same, but has weights that takes each of the different approaches and multiply it by its weight. So we take the, the results that were, uh, were, that were the output of the first approach and the, uh, and the results from the syntactic and the semantic, and we multiply it in this case by half, and then we get the relevant decision tree that represents the whole. How do we um, check our results and uh, the algorithm? We used four uh, different um, this, uh, data sets that are considered as uh, big data data sets. They're all in uh, UCI, can be found. And uh, we normalize the parameters for each decision tree. In this case, AMV and MinBox are defined as the minimum number of instances per leaf. And for each um, decision, uh, for each data set, we build two types of decision trees. One is the J48, that is C45, and CART. This is the details of each of them, of each of the data sets, and the proportion for the testing. So as you can see from this graph, um, the running time over the testing that it is one of the uh, crucial parts of uh, using a model in the industry. You produce the model and you use it many times. So since we use only one decision tree, we, are, uh, we have the, the best uh, performance from a time perspective. Uh, the number of slices are practically the number of uh, shards and the number of CPUs or processes that we have, uh, varying from 32 to uh, 1024. So the first one uh, you can see um, very shortly is uh, the um, data set that's called uh, Poker. You can see um, our results are very similar to Ensemble and other um, approaches. Uh, the second one that is considered as a much larger data set, the differences are very minor uh, from the XURC perspective. S same as for the third one and for the fourth. Uh, another um, task that we asked, our, another question that we asked is, is there a correlation between the semantic perspective to the syntactic? And as you can see, there is no correlation since the R square is quite low. Another uh, test that we um, uh, that we tested is the the accuracy uh, in um, um, in comparison to um, half in the the accuracy per, uh, the accuracy per percentile that we see that we are above it. So the conclusions are that SISM approach is very useful for distributed systems. Uh, it can be used also for security, um, um, for secure environments, since we don't need uh, the, to use the data, only the model itself. It functions well under memory constraints. Um, it has quite good results, both from perspective of accuracy and uh, from time performance. Thank you.